Daniel Lickies, and welcome to Book 101. Book 101 is all about the books that I read for the last 40 years, and today I have my special guest. He's the author of the upcoming novel, The Gambler's Game, no other than Mr. James Darnborough. Uh, greetings, Daniel. Yes, my name is James Darnborough, and I'm originally from London, England, born and raised, but I've lived in quite a few different countries since then. Now I live in Los Angeles in California, where I'm I'm very happy because it's nice and warm nearly all the time. <laughs> it's not raining. <laughs> yeah, exactly, it's not raining. So, Mr. James, can you tell us? the big difference of being a British and being an American? Well, it's funny you should ask that because I wouldn't have been able to write this book unless I had lived in the UK and in the USA because it truly is a transatlantic story. It's the story of a, a, you know, a Midwestern baseball player in the late 1800s who takes up roulette and eventually finds himself in Europe, in Paris, London, and Monte Carlo. So to describe everything in, in detail and how people speak to each other, I had the great advantage that I've lived both in Europe and in the USA. I don't think there are, I don't think there are major differences, to be honest. I think it's, you know, where you live is what you make of it, and it's the people. That, uh, that surround you. But I have to say that I, I do have a problem with cold weather. So I'm very happy to be in Southern California. Mr. James, what is your piece about climate change? Well, you know, it's amazing being here in California because it feels like there are so many clever people here who give up their, their spare time or even their full time to address issues of climate and the environment it feels like you're really at the epicenter and the, sort of the cutting edge of technology and everybody has an opinion which means they have actually bothered to do a little bit of research rather than just getting you know little little um just getting frustrated because it's an issue that's quite divisive where it, and it shouldn't be you know if you live on an island in the south pacific or if you live in the middle of zambia in africa you are very well aware that climate change is real so i'm i'm pleased to be in a place where people understand that and they're doing something about it very well said mr james so what age did you realize that you're good in writing oh i've i I didn't. I was a magazine publisher for 30 years. So I used to hire people who are much more intelligent than me and much better writers. I was just the guy that put it all together, which is a bit like being the producer of a film, but not being the actor. And what happened was is so the, if, you know, if the question is, when did you decide you wanted to be a writer? The answer is I was 50. Because <laughs> it, it was three years ago, and it wasn't even my idea. Uh, somebody said, "I found out about this story, and I need you. I, I think you should write a screenplay. You live in LA. Uh, you must know everybody, all the film guys. And said, sure, I got everybody on speed dial. Everyone knows everyone in the entertainment business, which isn't true. But uh, I thought, okay, let's write a screenplay. This will be great. It'll be a blockbuster. You know, we can sell it to Netflix or HBO, and fantastic." huge budget at least 120 million and then my wife said oh no you're not getting away with it that easily you need to go on this journey you need to write the whole book so i did and it took me three years and i'm i'm so pleased that this was the journey that i went on because otherwise honestly what often happens is that you write a script a studio will option it if you're incredibly lucky, and then they might sit on it for five years. So nobody would have story for a long time. And so this way, at least, I have the chance to get it out there and to share the story with everybody. 
Congratulations, Mr. James. So, who are your favorite authors that influence you the most? I read Stephen King's book, which is called On Writing. And it's a book that he actually wrote about 25 years ago and has been re-released several times. But he's just published an update last year. And it's, it's incredibly useful if you are quite new to writing, if you are understandably anxious that you're doing it right. And it's also really entertaining, which is important because you've got to enjoy the process. So I, f I found Stephen King's book on writing uh, uh, hugely helpful and I would definitely recommend it. As far as my favorite authors are concerned, I, I have spent the last three years only reading books that are relevant to the subject matter. I've read 20 books on Monte Carlo, uh, Belle Epoque, France, Life in the Old West, America, the Midwest. I've read books on baseball and all things that are relevant. So I can't wait to actually get my teeth stuck into uh, something that is... I suppose, more entertaining rather than reference. The very first book I read, the grown-up book, was H.G. Wells' The Time Machine. And I still think about it almost every day because, you know, what are, what are the possibilities? And it is extraordinary that he wrote that in 1908. So I, I, I'm kind of painting a picture that I'm quite a Renaissance guy, but that's just how I'm feeling right at this moment but i think books are the most wonderful thing and e audio books especially now and uh and of course i love podcasts <laughs> yes definitely audiobook and podcasts are the leading millennials choice nowadays, right. even gen z so mr james if you uh, describe the writing of your favorite authors or uh, styles of writing what is it or what are they Favorite styles of writing are, to me, anything that's really engaging. I like a lot of people these days. I like things that are quite fast paced. I think as 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 you know, more information becomes available to us in in a very easy format. It seems like we are becoming more impatient, and I'm included in this. And so you know long drawn out epic sagas are okay as long as you can take one bite at a time so you know lord of the rings and game of thrones and and even um harry potter you know these these are sort of you know you're almost going through a, a, a generation of of people in those stories as long as it's bite-sized then that's great but at the moment i quite like um stories that are based on facts and the book i've just written is based on a true story as well so that's that's kind of the, the style i like very well said mr james what are your short-term and long-term goals in writing this is this is a book that is 150 years in the making the gambler's game because that's when the uh, protagonist was born and I want to it's very difficult to you know be successful as a somebody who sells paperbacks in you know on in uh, bricks and mortar retail outlets unless you are prepared to spend an enormous amount of money on marketing so my goal is for everyone to enjoy this, the audiobook, the ebook, and in print, and to have a studio look at an, adapting a screenplay, because I think this is this is perfect for a an eight or a ten part series on one of the main streaming platforms like HBO or Netflix or um, any any anybody. And so that is my goal, is to get this onto the screen. Now, you know, this is always a bit of an anxious time for a writer because once you give it over to a studio, there's no telling what they're going to do to it. 
but luckily this is you know this is vintage baseball meets downton abbey meets uh gritty gilded age meets belle epoque france and so i think it's got all the ingredients for people to want to actually stick to the story because the story is extraordinary and it stands up on its own so we'll see but that that's my goal i want to get this onto screens Good luck to your goal, Mr. James. But before we go on, I want to shout out to the people listening in Denmark. Because in capital region, I got 52% audience shares. South Denmark, 23%. North Denmark at 17%. Zealand at 5%. And Central Jutland at 4%. Thank you, Denmark, for supporting this podcast. Because this podcast is created in power writers all over the world. Like Mr. James Darnborough. So, Mr. James, let's talk about the Gambler's Games. How did you craft today? Crafted it. I actually was incredibly lucky because this is based on chronological events. It means I had a skeleton, if you like. I had the bones of the story mapped out for me. So I have I've told it in the present tense. So there is the trials for the baseball team and then getting signed by Denver. And then there are a series of extraordinary events that happen that culminates in the character breaking the bank at Monte Carlo, the only American to ever break the bank at Monte Carlo. And that was in 1908. So this is an extraordinary time, though, because this is when they invented motor car, the airplane, the telephone. And so many things became possible. And, you know, America was changing. And so what I had to do was to take all these events and then bring it to life. So I can, for example, I can look at a baseball game, let's say Denver are playing Kansas, and these are tough guys, you know, they all have the most magnificent moustaches, but they're, they're tough guys, they work in the brewery on the off season, whatever. And, and then I had to work out how they talk to each other. And so basically what happened is this is, it's like a biography that's wrapped in a novel. So I brought the characters to life. So I've used everybody's real, all the people in the book are real down to the guy that runs a saloon on 6th Street, who's called Eugene Madden, whose cousin is the um, police chief. And I wanted to then expand on that and make it an adventure. So instead of, you know, a 35-hour train ride between uh, Denver and Kansas, for example, where people are just sitting looking out the window, there's a train robbery. But the guys who, the guys who rob the train are real people like uh, Pegleg Watson was a, he was a real guy they arrested him eventually the Pinkertons found him so that that's that's how we did it interesting Mr. James so what inspired you to write this novel I think it's something I've always wanted to do and What inspired me to write the novel is that I'm sure every writer says the same thing. It is a story that I had within me that was just desperate to come out. But it wouldn't have been possible even 10 years ago to do it with the, the accuracy of the research and so on. Because, you know, I have, I, have, I have two computers going. I've got one that I write on, one that I research on, two, two screens. And I have access to hundreds and hundreds of thousands of newspaper clippings from the time because the newspapers were everything back then. You know, there was no radio. There was no other no other media. So there's a lot of information there that you can get. And I can get it just from my desk uh, without having to go anywhere, which is extraordinary. We did visit quite a few places. Uh, we went to the casino in Monte Carlo and they were incredibly happy to see us. And uh, we had an amazing time there. And I went to Mexico City uh, where he played roulette and went to the hotel that he stayed in. And bear in mind, this was 1902. And it's extraordinary because some of these places haven't changed at all because they love preserving them. Anyway, um, I think that's that's... You know, inspiration comes from so many, so many different places. 
And I think the important thing is to stay inspired once you're on the journey. And I certainly was able to do that because I kept discovering extraordinary things, extraordinary new things. Mr. Jones, can you tell us about the writing process of this novel? Well, I, I started writing at night and I would write four hours a night for about six months. And, and then I got serious because there was so much research to do. Uh, I had to start getting a little bit um, disciplined. So I'd say, for example, I'll do, I'll do my research in the morning and I'll write in the afternoon. So, I mean, basically this, this took over my life and uh, my family will certainly attest to that. I think that you know, everybody's different. Some people can write with music. I can't. I need silence. And some people can just pick up a, an iPad while they're sitting in the airport and start writing. I can't do that. But I have managed to pick up my laptop in my travels. One thing that one thing that might might be useful to people is that I found being in America, you know, we drive a lot. We drive all the time. And, I, you know, things would come to me that I think of and I, and I go, God, I must put that in the book. And so I use audio notes. So I can literally, I can just say to my phone, hey, Siri, new notes. And it goes, what do you want it to say? And I'll say, uh, this, is, this is what happened in the, you know, this was uh, something on a steamship, on a transatlantic steamship about them sitting on the deck or something in the wind or, you know, something that I just thought was absolutely, gosh, we've got to have this in the book. So that's that's one little tip. If I'm uh, if I'm qualified to give a tip, that would be it. That would be interesting, Mr. James. So, what challenges have you faced writing this novel? Keep going, just keep going. The it's so tempting every evening just to say, "Oh, really? I think I've done enough. Just do a bit more." just do a bit more and uh, again you know this is self-discipline and the other thing is to is to not worry about what how you perceive readers will will um, consume this this story and tell it tell your story don't think about the the reader at all just tell your story let it happen just just naturally and i think that another another really important thing is that when you when you think you've finished you really haven't and i've been editing and re-editing and i've had an editor and a line editor for about a year so give yourself time you know, un uh, unrealistic deadlines that publishers enforce on you can really cramp your style, I think. I mean, some people thrive on that. Some people thrive with deadlines, not me. I needed a lot longer than I thought. I thought I'd be done with this here in a year and a half, and it took twice as long. So don't, don't, don't be in a rush. Oh, wow. Congratulations. At least you finished it. So, Mr. James, how do you approach uh, research for this book, for right. this novel? Right. Well, I had to do a huge amount of research for this because I wanted to get it right. So all the taverns and saloons, I mean, like I mentioned uh, Eugene Madden's place in Denver. It was called Madden's. The barman was called Michael Flattery. He was from Kilkenny in Ireland. And I have a photograph of him. I have quite a lot of stuff from um, around 1910 in Monte Carlo. So I have things like pocketbooks and um, chips and things like that. And so I've, I've collected quite a few, quite a few things to help me to get i mean it's, you know i feel a bit like a time traveler in a way and um i've learned a lot about what was happening in the world at the turn of the last century which is absolutely fascinating you know like the first apart from the wright brothers the first flight across the channel 
and uh, President McKinley being assassinated in Buffalo at the World's Fair and, and all of these things. But this is quite important. When you're writing a historical fiction novel, you can't go down the rabbit holes because it's very interesting to get little pointers and little things, but I, I, want, I need to stick to the plot. And so this is, this is very important when you're doing research. When you found out what you need to find out, stop and put it, put it down in the book. But don't drift off into a huge, long explanation about, you know, too, too much detail because you've got, to, you've got to stick to the story and think about the piece of research that you've discovered. Does that actually enhance the plot? And so I think that's that's quite important is to is to know when to stop the research and get on with the story. Very well said, Mr. James. So what are your or what is your inspiring word for those aspiring writers out there? Confidence. Self-confidence. I think every writer will go through terrible moments of doubt, regret that you even started the, the, the project. And there isn't an easy solution to this apart from just carry on. Because I guarantee that the joy that you feel of completing a project far outweighs the sadness that you would feel for quitting halfway so just carry on i mean I, i have friends who've spent 15 years writing books and it doesn't matter the thing is is that they carried on and now they are published authors and they're so happy about it so don't quit don't quit we want to hear your story so please share it with us Yes, people, and stop procrastinating. Go for it. If you have the passion to write, 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 write. So, Mr. James, before we go, and I'm inviting you to listen to my other podcast, Food 101, our third season with Chef Alessandro, one of the best executive chef in a five-star restaurant in downtown Toronto. And please do listen to our latest episode. We talk about sanitation and hygiene in the kitchen, people. Plus, One more, our books are out, not only one, but 12 volumes, people. And our Christmas volume, Christmas recipe volume is coming this month. So please do uh, uh, grab a copy, Food 101, Volume 13, Christmas Recipes. So please do uh, grab a copy, Food 101, Volume 1 until 12 is only the books that you need. How to create a delicious food available on Amazon and leading online bookstores worldwide. So, Mr. James, how has your writing evolved over time? I think I became more free. I, I started having fun. Because all the anxieties at the beginning sort of fell away as I became more confident with the story. And so I began to have fun. And, and, and it's, 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 quite, it's quite challenging to be descriptive without being over-descriptive. So... This again, I'll go back to Stephen King's book on writing. I, I've basically adopted his style because I've, I've kept it very straightforward in plain English. No fancy long words just to try and make me look clever because that just irritates people. And keeping, keeping the plot going, keeping it an adventure, keeping it fast paced, but not confusing. And... I think that the, the, the confidence in your writing just, just comes. And again, don't worry about how people are going to interpret this. You know, just keep going, keep going, keep going. And when you finished it, do it again. And then read it out loud. This is one of the best things I could have done is 
I read the entire book out loud and recorded it. Obviously not in one go, it's 400 pages. But I did one chapter at a time, 60 chapters, read it out loud and then listened to it. And it's a hugely different experience than just, just reading it to yourself. Is that the, the dialogue comes alive and you you know you 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 start you start look using your other senses and you're thinking okay what was the smell and the sound and taste and so you can start putting those kind of things in and then you're really having fun so i think that's that's very very important is to enjoy the journey and uh, yes. so, and, and and you know eventually i did so mr james how do you balance writing with the other aspects of your life well, that's quite tricky, isn't it? Because not everyone has the opportunity to just drop everything and start writing. I felt that this was important enough that I could put everything on hold. But the other thing is that, you know, a, a book like this, for a lot of the time, I was locked away in the basement in self-imposed exile. And... Not everyone can do that, of course. I was very lucky that I've got a basement where I can do that. But the other thing is, is I, I did a fair amount of traveling and meeting people with this. Mm. So, you know, if you're lucky enough that you can devote time to something like writing an entire book, then f for me, if it's historical, you know, then I had to go and interview. I mean, I, I was I was in a basement of a guy in, a, in Boulder, Colorado, who was a vintage baseball expert turns out he was the advisor to ken burns on his documentary about baseball and i'm sitting with him in his basement in the in i don't know where some somewhere in the rocky mountains and you know just thinking gosh how did i get here and 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 that's you know that that's all that's all part of it and then in mexico city with the general manager of a hotel that had been there for 140 years and he's showing me all these black and white pictures from 1910 and 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 earlier and so you know that 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 was me uh but as i said in the beginning i was just working at night i was just opening up the laptop not watching anything on netflix i i missed a lot of shows but to uh and you and you know you have to you have to decide how much time you're gonna you're gonna put into this sacrifice <laughs> right Right. Yeah. <laughs> so, Mr. James, what are some themes or topics that you are passionate about exploring in your writing? Well, I'm a product of an English boarding school education, which I went to boarding school when I was seven, eight or something. And the way that we're brought up over there is that it's very we find it very difficult to understand emotions to show them or to even feel them and so i'm now writing a story where i've got to try and impart to you the emotions of uh victorian or edwardian women now i don't i don't have the ability to explain my own emotions so how on earth am i going to understand emotions of how our women were feeling uh you know 120 years ago and that was a real challenge uh you know obviously i'm i'm joking about this but nevertheless it's something i had to learn how to do and it's all very well saying you know you've got to dig deep and no you i i honestly i couldn't do it so i i had some help uh, i found someone who wrote historical fiction novels and i asked for her help and don't be afraid to ask for help is is a very good point actually don't be afraid to ask for help i mean i've had a i've had a you know a, a team of people who i've i've just picked up the phone and go i hear you're an expert in this can you can you tell me you know what was it what was it like you know the bets that people used to make on baseball games while they were sitting in the grandstands and things like that but yeah so I, I'm glad you asked the question because it's so important that is that you know writing can be a lonely business. You can feel like you're an island for a lot of the time. Do not be afraid to ask for help. People who are experts in their fields will love to be asked to help and will be 99% of the time will be happy to to give you advice. And so that, I'm very lucky that I had I had help on that on that front. Certainly, people. So, Mr. James, the Gunners game, how do you hope 
your novel will be remembered or appreciated by future generations. It's it's very interesting because thanks to Julian Fellows and Downton Abbey and the Gilded Age, I think there's a, a real resurgence of interest in this particular era because it was the most exciting time in the history, certainly the history of America. Because, you know, we think it's extraordinary now that we're inventing things like Bitcoin and, you know, AI and the rest of it. But think in those days, they, they in a very, very short period of time, they invented the telephone, the motor car. So that made communication and distances just, I mean, it just, it changed everything. And then the airplane. So, and, you know, and it was a bit like when, when um, Steve Jobs says we're all going to have PCs in our homes, we thought that was ridiculous. Well, Henry Ford said everyone's going to own a car. They thought that was ridiculous too. To have your own telephone in a house, amazing. And so I think this was the most exciting time in the history of, of existence. And so it was, it was a real pleasure to, um, to, you know, to become part of retelling that story. So I hope that my my book is remembered for, you know, being interesting in terms of, you know, historical accuracy. But otherwise, the actual story itself, this is the only American who broke the Bank of Monte Carlo ever. And he came from a farm in southern Illinois and escaped. Um, I'm not saying that everyone should escape from farms in Illinois. Not at all. Thank you if you're a farmer in Illinois for doing what you do. But in those days, life was pretty tough. And so baseball was his way out, um, you know, because the films didn't exist. So, the, 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 you know, the alternative of the Hollywood stars of the day were the baseball players. So he became one of those. And that was his ticket out. And we follow his adventure. And I think, it, I think hopefully this book will be remembered as, you know, Finding someone in history who was outstanding at the time and being able to tell their stories is a real privilege. And uh, it's a real privilege to be able to share it with everyone, too. Very well said, Mr. James. And thank you, Fritz Fats, for being the number two of the best 100 book podcasts on the planet and number one in the art book category. So thank you so much. And of course, listen notes. For my latest score of 26 and belong to 10% popular show globally. So, Mr. James, can you invite our listeners to support your debut novel, The Gobblers Game, coming this February 12, 2024? Absolutely. The best way to do this is to go to thegamblersgame.com, thegamblersgame.com, and sign up for the newsletter. And then we're going to send, uh, we're just about to uh, reveal the front cover. And we will have special offers and all kinds of things. The audio book is being recorded right now. And that's incredibly exciting. So I found someone who can do American narration and also you can do French accents, Italian accents, English accents. I mean, it's just amazing that I found someone that can, that can do this. I do an American accent, but my wife says I'm not allowed to leave the house with it. So <laughs> I'm very pleased that we found. So please go to the please go to the gamblers game dot uh, com and sign up for the for the newsletter. There's Instagram and and all the rest of it, but you can find all that from the website. Yes, people, let's support Mr. James so that if more and more books to come, right, Mr. James? Thank you for the opportunity to be on Books 101, Daniel. It's been a real pleasure. Bodycon people, see you soon.